In this video, we focus on how to find and estimate pKa values of specific protons in a molecule. pKa values are a measure of the acidity of a given proton. These values are experimentally determined by dissolving an acid in a given solvent, usually water or dimethyl sulfoxide. The Ka, or acid dissociation constant, is determined for the reaction. We take the negative log of the Ka to calculate the pKa. When the acid is stronger, the equilibrium lies more to the right, meaning the Ka is larger and the pKa value is smaller. When the acid is weaker, the equilibrium lies more to the left. The Ka is smaller and the pKa value is larger. What is the strongest acid in this series? The lower the pKa, the stronger the acid, and so the strongest acid in this series is the HBr. Dozens of pKa values have been experimentally determined. Three reliable sources for finding them include the Evans pKa table, the Bordwell pKa table, and the CRC Handbook of Chemistry and Physics. We have created a simplified version of the pKa tables using those reliable sources for the pKa data. Now we'll look at how to efficiently use this table to find the exact pKa value of a given compound, and how to estimate a pKa value when the given compound is not in the table. For example, we can find the pKa value of hydrochloric acid by finding its formula, HCl, in the table, and reading across to find the pKa value of negative 8. We can also find the pKa value of phenol. To find its value, it might help to convert the condensed structures to the Lewis or line structures. What is the pKa value for phenol? Phenol has a pKa value of approximately 10. Notice that this value is quite a bit lower than that of a typical alcohol. We talk about the reasons why in a later video. Very often, the exact compound we're looking for will not be found in this table. What then? First, we identify the functional group that bears the proton. Nomenclature101.com has a description of common functional groups and gives opportunities for you to practice and learn them. The compound on screen bears an aliphatic alcohol an alcohol on an sp3 hybridized carbon. Now we find a compound with the same functional group in the pKa table. The most similar compounds are water and tert-butanol. That tells us that isopropanol has a pKa value of 16 or 17. We can find the exact pKa value of isopropanol in a more detailed table, such as Evans' pKa table. The value is 16.5. The pKa values of aliphatic alcohols typically fall between 15 and 18. Usually, the exact value is not needed. The approximation is sufficient. Here's a question for you to try. What is the pKa value of the underlined proton in each case? Remember that it's important to get comfortable using a pKa table and its associated functional groups. The amine's pKa value is approximately 38. The ammonium's pKa value is approximately 11, and alkyl protons have pKa values of approximately 50. The protons alpha to a ketone have a pKa value of approximately 20, even though they are alkyl protons. We go into the reasons why in a later video. Now what do we do when the functional group in question is not on the pKa table at all? We will come back to this skill after we learn about the properties that affect acid and base strength. On another note, as you look at more and more pKa tables, you'll notice that the solvent is specified and that there are usually different pKa values in different solvents. That's because the solvent affects the position of the acid-base equilibrium, which will be covered in more advanced courses. At this point, be sure to be consistent by taking the pKa values from a consistent source and using the values from the same solvent. In summary, in this video, we learn that pKa values are calculated from experimental data and can be found in reliable sources. We can find or estimate pKa values using a simplified pKa table. To do so, we identify the functional group bearing the proton in question, then find that functional group in a pKa table.